Wait, why he is, he's getting that crazy? No further discussion. Good afternoon. <clears throat> Dear Smirgret is Padraig, a good falter is shock. Our village community here in Okanur proudly welcome you. In a simple ceremony or liturgy, we are publicly acknowledging, recognizing the pivotal role one of our own, Maureen Sweeney, Niflavin played in the D-Day landings and the liberation of Europe. Maureen Flavin traveled to Black Sod Bay to take up her appointment as a postmistress where she met her future husband, Ted Sweeney, Lord of mercy on his soul. Many of their families and friends and extended families are here with us today. Part of Maureen's job description was to read the weather charts and send reports to Dublin. <coughs> On Saturday, June the 3rd, 1944, she conscientiously did so and informed the authorities in Dublin, who then informed the Allied Command Council in Europe, that a strong storm off the west coast of Ireland was heading south towards the English Channel and Normandy. And the rest is history, world-changing history. Our plaque is our way of publicly recognizing that pivotal role that Maureen played in that historical event. I invite you now to spend a few moments quiet reflection as our church bells <clears throat> will call us to prayer. We place ourselves in the presence of God the Father who created us. God the Son who redeemed and saved us. And God the Holy Spirit who guides us. Gathering us in our prayers, our thoughts, and our memories. Historically, we know everything is correct. Here I have a copy of the original document. To use its official language, it's a document that comes from the Department of Industry and Commerce, Meteorological Service, station weather record and I don't understand the details in it but it was written Black Sod Bay Saturday the 3rd of June 1944 and I know it's gospel truth, 
It's signed by I did, Margaret Sweeney. <clears throat> I remember on television, Maureen was shown a copy of this document. And in those marvelous, simple words, she said, oh, that's my writing all right, which I thought was a lovely way of verifying that what we're doing today is gospel truth and history. is here. Maureen's daughter. And with the helping hand of Fionn Thomas, Maureen's great, great grand nephew, they will now unveil our little flag. Just stay around for a while now, sharing thoughts and memories and stories, because Paddy and Catty and their family are going to provide us with some refreshments and a cup of tea. And as we do so, we are celebrating Maureen's 99th birthday. It was on the 3rd of June, and she celebrated it with her family in Black Sod Bay. She won't mind if we're a few days late <laughs> in joining her in that celebration. A word of thanks to Leo Finucane, our own local sculptor and stonemason, who designed, crafted, and generally gifted this plaque to our community. Take care, be safe, and God bless you. Just. Vincent is here somewhere, and 
he will introduce the next part of our little celebration, which is very important. Reverend Fathers, Reverend Fathers, a sister, I think Mary is out there somewhere, cousin of mums. Uh, on behalf of the Sweeney Flavin and indeed the Kennelly family, we welcome you all here today on this special occasion. And uh, I would really like to thank from the heart Father Brendan O'Callaghan, who was instrumental in organizing all this. I would like to thank my good friend here, Leo Finucane, who prepared and made up the plaque. I would also like to thank uh, Pixie O'Gorman for their uh, streaming and video coverage. Um, to my left, you can see the Mayo and Kerry flag flying in harmony. Now, I don't know what will happen next weekend. I think they might be blowing into each other a bit, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. So uh, I would like to... Oh, yeah, and Billy Scanlon, indeed, I spoke to Billy before. Uh, uh, it was a year ago tomorrow on the 19th when the congressional record and everything came to mum and the medal. And I would like to introduce Owen O'Hagan from Scarif. Owen set the ball rolling, and he'll tell you that uh, little story briefly now about all this the way the medal came and all the uh, the congressional record that came from the United States from the, the government. So, Owen, can I pass this to you? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Reverend Fathers, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for inviting me to knock on your, but it's not about celebrating me, it's about celebrating Maureen Flavin Sweeney, uh, who left here 19 years of age in 1942 and headed up to uh, County Mayo, not knowing what was ahead of her, and not knowing that she literally was going to change the history of the world. Um, four years ago, five years ago now, I met John J. Kelly uh, from uh, Louisiana, from New Orleans in Louisiana, and uh, he was involved in the Apollo space program in 1960s and actually built the rocket that fired uh, Buzz our, our Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong off the moon during the Apollo 11 uh, program. Um, a fascinating man, John J. Kelly, his father was originally from Fecal in County Clare, moved over to um, New York in the early 1900s, and uh, John was born over there. Um, John is uh, also the manufacturer. Uh, you remember on D-Day, the Higgins boats landed all the soldiers and the Marines on the shore. Well, um, the Higgins boats were replaced by these uh, hovercraft that John designed with his company. And they're being used in both military, but mainly in humanitarian reasons all around the world since uh, the 1980s when they were originally built. Uh, John, I told this story to him four years ago about Maureen Sweeney. And uh, he was very interested because he was formerly on the board of the World War II Museum in New Orleans. And he said, these people need to know this story because... Um, at that time, they didn't, and uh, he went back to New Orleans after me telling the story, and uh, at the start of COVID, he was promising he was going to come with his wife, Pat, and visit Maureen in Black Sod, but unfortunately, COVID shut down the world, and not just Black Sod, shut down everywhere, so he couldn't come, and he asked me to go and research uh, the story of Maureen Sweeney and come back with some detail. This I did. I went up with uh, a very good friend of mine, um, Mark Kelly from Ennis, who was the former chief pilot of Rescue Woman 5 in Shannon. And we went up and met uh, Vincent in Blacksod. And Vincent told me this fascinating story about his mother, about his father, about his grandmother, and about his aunt, uh, Margaret, Ted, uh, Francis, and Maureen, who during the war, on the hour, every hour, 24-7, reported the weather forecast uh, to the Met Office in Dublin. And little did they know that this was being reported to the Allied uh, Command in England. Uh, it was particular significance when, in 1944, when D the D-Day landings were being planned. Um, they needed good weather, and uh, Maureen's weather, for, weather, weather report of the, the 3rd of June, or 4th of June, 3rd of June, I think it was, 
on her 21st birthday changed the history of the war and saved hundreds of thousands of lives. And this has been said, included by General Eisenhower, who became president of the US because of the success of D-Day and the European landings. This young lady from Knockinure in County Clare changed the world. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have the jet lag my wife has come back to New York last week. <laughs> but, um, sorry, Kerry, I know you're pretty proud of your county here. <laughs> um, but Maureen moved up from here and she did literally change the world. And John Kelly said that the museum, not only the museum needs to know, they needed to know in the US Congress and a very good friend of him, of his, is uh, Jack Bergman, a congressman for the first Michigan, more first area of Michigan in the US. And he took it on himself to get uh, recognition by the US Congress for Maureen. And uh, I should acknowledge Maureen, who's probably watching above in Black Sod. Good afternoon, Maureen. It's great to see you again. And uh, this is all about you. It's not about me. It's not about anybody else here. It's about Maureen Sweeney. Oh, wait, this is gone. Jack, Jack Berg, Congressman Bergman is uh, an ex-Marine of the US Marines, a general, and uh, he was particularly interested in Maureen's story because he knew militarily what the weather forecast uh, caused to happen on D-Day and how uh, they needed fair weather for this landings. Um, he wrote this letter and uh, entered it into Congress, and I would like to read it, because not everyone will have read this, Father, so if you, I'm gonna take the time to read that letter, is that okay? Actually, I'll take that one because it's probably easier instead of going inside and into the envelope. So, Jack, yeah, Jack Bergman read this into congressional record on June the 6th, 2021, which was the anniversary of D-Day. Madam Speaker, it is my honour to recognise the service of Maureen Flavin Sweeney, whose skill and poise as the weather forecaster at Ireland's County Mayo weather station during World War II saved countless Allied lives and ensured the success of the D-Day invasion. On June the 3rd, 1944, her 21st birthday, Maureen compiled a report warning of stormy weather hitting the English Channel the morning of June the 5th. Unknown to her at the time, this was the initial date chosen by Allied command for the invasion of Normandy, an operation which required clear skies for air support and calm water to ensure the safety of those in amphibious landing craft. Maureen's weather report was passed along to General Dwight D. Eisenhower, who made the fateful decision to delay the landings by 24 hours. A subsequent weather report predicted clear conditions the morning of June the 6th, and despite the ongoing rain and wind, General Eisenhower put his trust in the forecasters like Maureen and went forward with the invasion. As we know, the successful landing set the stage for Allied victory in Europe less than a year later. General Eisenhower would later comment, I thank the God of war we went when we did. Madam Speaker, on the 77th anniversary of the D-Day landing, I am honoured to recognise the service, the service of Maureen Flavin Sweeney. Her skill and professionalism were crucial in ensuring Allied victory and her legacy will live on for generations to come. This 21-year-old lady, young child is all she was really, from Knockinure in County Kerry, uh, changed the history of the world on June the 3rd, 19th, 1944 and I think this plaque recognises that and I want to thank Maureen again from the bottom of my heart and John Kelly who unfortunately can't be here because he travelled from America last week but contracted COVID when he was travelling so unfortunately can't be here but he does send his best to everybody here in Knock and Ure and also to Maureen again and he promises that later in the summer he's hopefully going to go to Black Sod and visit. Um, please remember Maureen today, she's, she's the hero of this no one else, and uh, I'd like to thank Maureen Flavin Sweeney once more. Thank you. Uh, and I'm going to call my wife Ruth, who wrote this beautiful poem for Maureen, to read it once more for Maureen again as she's watching from the nursing home. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, 
It's a real honor to be here again to share the poem that uh, I created for Maureen last year uh, to honor this incredible um, moment in history. And I'd like to say a special hello to Maureen herself, who I understand is looking in from Sonnet's nursing home, where we were this time last year in Black Sod Bay. The girl who changed the world. Maureen Flavin Sweeney. Please check, please repeat. The howling winds at Black Sod spoke. Please check, please repeat. Every hour precisely. The summer rain and sea swept swain hold the fear of vagrants passing. Who will sit? At winning's end, evil men or virtue. The neutral moments register in the dark light of dawn, places across the sea calling fervently the unnamed and the maimed who chime upon the clock. Each hour, Eisenhower waits. Please check, please repeat, please come, Please release our souls from mortal danger. Unknown thought that time has caught between the torchlight and the flame of signals lost and signals tossed from one landing to another. Catching threads that weave the edge of nature's cause abounding. Recording all was God's sweet girl never knowing she would change the world. Thank you. Yeah, we're, go we're going to play a piece of music in a minute, but uh, I have to, a little notes to make. A plaque will be unveiled at the Listowel Community Centre tomorrow Sunday at 11am in the memory of the late uh, Olympian Jerry Kiernan. So please attend that. Leo, I think you install that as well, as you? Come on. Uh, so we're going to play a piece of music now uh, for Maureen.
thanks for being here. Um, it's awesome what's happening and how we remembered it. I suppose on a personal level, I remember my father, Lord Merson, and the head teacher in school here, who used to always say it to us, if you have a story, write it down, because otherwise it never happened. And I remember casually telling this story to my nephew, Billy, he's over there with his head down. <laughs> And straight away, because his news editor for the Star newspaper, he saw a message. And he's responsible for this, in that sense. So, it is all local, which is international. Safe journey. God be with you. <laughs>